Hello and welcome back to a new video on my channel. Quite a few months ago I bought a new camera for Deep Sky Astrophotography, which is the Canon EOS 600D. Actually I have not planned to use that camera mostly for astrophotography, but more for time-lapse photography, but there were a lot of people asking me, Felix, could you please do a video about using the Canon EOS 600D for astrophotography, and here we go. So tonight I would like to use the Canon EOS 600D the very first time for Deep Sky Astrophotography. Quite a few days ago I captured an image of Comet C2023A3 with the Canon EOS 600D, but tonight is the very first time of using the Canon EOS 600D on my big mount, which is the, the mount I'm always using for deep sky astrophotography. So tonight I'm planning to do a bit of deep sky astrophotography. Finally the conditions are perfect to do deep sky astrophotography. So as you can see in the background, there are no clouds in the sky right now. So perfect conditions for tonight and furthermore, tonight there will be a new moon. So perfect conditions for tonight in order to do a bit of deep sky astrophotography. Um, so this video will be all about the Canon EOS 600D and especially about using that one for deep sky astrophotography. But first of all, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it. So all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But before we start, I would like to introduce the setup we'll be using for tonight's astrophotography session. As we mentioned, the camera will be the Canon EOS 600D and at the front I've attached a lens. Actually, this is the very first time using this lens as well. So it's a Tamron 15 to 30 mm lens with a maximum aperture of f2.8 at every focal length this lens has. Tonight I would like to use uh, the maximum focal length of 30 mm, uh, which should help me to get a good framing of the object I would like to capture tonight. But I would like to talk about the object I've planned to capture later on. Furthermore, I would like to use the Canon EOS 600D as I have already mentioned, and since Earth is rotating, we need a tracking mount. For today's astrophotography session, I'm planning to use um, the HEQ5 Pro GoTo mount, so I'm always using this mount for astrophotography. In this case, it's a bit too heavy for that, for that camera and this lens, but that's definitely not a problem. So this is the mount I'm planning to use for tonight. Since Earth is rotating, we need to use a tracking mount. For sure, astrophotography is possible without tracking mount as well, but then we need to use very short exposure time in order to not get star shields in our final results. But we're using this tracking mount, I'm planning to capture around 3 minute long images. So, images with an exposure time of around 3 minutes, which is definitely not a problem. So, furthermore, tonight I will not use the CWO ASI Pro as usually to control this entire setup. So, tonight I would like to use. Um, the hand controller that should help me to go to the object I would like to capture. So usually I'm using the CWO ASI Air Pro, but tonight there are only a few hours of total clear skies and therefore I will not use the biggest uh, setup I have. So I will control the entire setup with the hand controller of this mount and furthermore to control the camera I would like to use um, the shutter release cable. So later on I can um, set the exposure time and the time between the different images, all of those things that I need to control the camera. So I will use this shutter release cable to control the camera all night long so that it captures images for a few hours in the night sky. So yeah, this is actually the entire Deep Sky Astrophotography setup. So I'm really, really interested how um, the Canon EOS 600D will be in astrophotography. So far I've not used it for effort for Deep Sky Astrophotography. Something I really like is this uh, flip screen. So the Canon EOS 2000D does not have a flip screen, so I'm really I'm excited how everything's working tonight. I'm very interested in the noise this camera has and how good it is in capturing images of the night sky. But now I would like to talk about the object I've planned to capture for tonight. Since we're using a very, very uh, wide field setup, so only uh, 30 millimeters of focal length, I have planned to capture um, the entire region of the North American Nebula. So there's the Veil Nebula, the North American Nebula, and a lot of different objects. So this is the region I have will capture tonight, so there's, there are a lot of objects in that framing, but since this camera is not as modified, that might be a bit, a bit of problem tonight, but I really think that we'll be able to capture an amazing image of this region tonight. So unfortunately there's a lot of H-alpha in the North American Nebula in this entire region, therefore we need to capture long exposure time or to reveal those structures in this object, but I definitely think that we'll be able to capture some amazing images of this object tonight, so I'm planning to capture around three to four hours of total exposure time at a maximum aperture of f2.8 in order to let in as much light as possible. Usually I do not recommend to use the maximum aperture of your lens when using it for deep sky astrophotography, but in this case I would like to capture a lot of light and therefore I will use the maximum aperture of this lens. So I need to take test images later on, perhaps I'm using f3.2, 
if when the images are not that good when capturing at f2.8, but I need to decide on that later on, but I'm definitely planning to capture at f2.8 in order to let in as much light as possible. And then I would like to capture single images with my ISO value between 800 and 1000. 600, but I actually think that I will use an ISO value of 800 because this is an ISO value that is good for using DSLR cameras for astrophotography. Then I would like to use a single exposure time of around 3 to 4 minutes. Um, I will take test images and check whether we will have star trials in our final results or not, but I think around 3 minutes should be okay for tonight. That's actually everything I would like to mention about the astrophotography setup for tonight. So as I mentioned, I would like to capture around 3 to 4 hours of total exposure time. I really hope that everything goes as planned and um, we'll see us later when we try to capture this object. So later on I need to do the pole alignment process and then we can directly start capturing images of the night sky. So see you later. When I took the first test images, I decided to capture another region of the night sky. Instead of photographing the region around the North American Nebula, I decided to take a wide field image of the Andromeda Galaxy and the constellation Cassiopeia. However, other objects can also be seen in this image, such as a double star cluster for example. Unfortunately, I was only able to take pictures of this region for a few hours because just a few hours later, the entire night sky was full of clouds. So unfortunately, I'm not entirely happy with how the image turned out. Therefore, I will definitely have to collect more exposure time in the near future to improve this image even further. The image itself has a total exposure time of 3 hours at an ISO value of 800 and an aperture of f3.2. If you have any further questions on the image or on using the Canon EOS 600D for deep sky astrophotography, feel free to ask me down below in the comments. And if this guide and this video was helpful to you, I would really really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.